Everybody wonders, how did you get a job with Elvis? It was because of Southern gospel music. On the piano from Nashville is Tony Brown. I mean, Winston-Salem is the epitome of where that was the, the heartbeat of this, of this part of the country, you know? But when I got with Elvis, I mean, he did How Great the Art, he did Sweet, Sweet Spirit. It was basically, I thought, well, this is no different than being in a, in a gospel group because this is like church service on stage. Even though we're in an arena, it's basically like we're in his living room and he's, we're just singing gospel songs or singing front porch songs. And then after he passed away, that led me to Emmy Lou Harris, which put me in the country music world, which I never really liked or I never was turned on to. And I just love her style of country music. And then while I was with her, I met Vince Gill, who came from Bluegrass, but he was playing in a pop band, Pure Pure League. So all this stuff sort of ties together. I was like exposed to so much different kinds of music and I was going, this isn't all that different. I don't know what my dad didn't like about worldly music. It's kind of the same thing, and the people are really nice. Amy Lou said, what, you know what I love about your playing is your heavy left hand from that gospel thing. And I never thought about that, but the piano player had to be like the drummer and the bass player, and then do a few little things in the middle, to, little licks to show off, you know. It was just a matter of sh showmanship, you know. And, and I, I can't do it now, but with Elvis, we had to play a solo. You know, he would introduce the band, and when I got there, I'd never been in a group where they go, now we're gonna introduce the band to you, playing on bass, and, and I'd never been in that position, so the first time Elvis said, and Tony Brown on piano, and I was going, what in the world am I gonna play? And so I just started playing boogie woogie, you know. I, I learned what my limitations were, but I tried to push them as far as I could without getting to that point of rising to the level of my incompetence. I didn't want to do that, right? I think I'm glad I was raised the way I was raised because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I just sort of stumbled into, in gospel music, stumbled into the fact that I loved people liking what I did. I loved pleasing people and, and I loved making them laugh too. So I became, I tried to get better. And if, if it wasn't getting them, if my playing wasn't getting to them, I would, started being kind of funny. I became known as kind of a, you know, the, the court gesture, I guess. Because J.D. Sumner would make me do things to please the crowd. He would pick on me and the crowd would feel sorry for me. That kind of stuff. The first Elvis record that I, that I had gotten into was Suspicious Minds. And that was around, what, early 70s? And I was playing with the uh, Stamps Quartet by then on a bus with a bunch of guys that, that wasn't raised like I was raised. And so I got to hear Elton John, I got to hear Stevie Wonder, and I was just going, wow, man. And I could hear the gospel influence and all that stuff. And then you, read it, you start reading uh, bios of these guys, and. It always goes back to the church, it seems like. As long as you got a passion and you got a, got a decent heartbeat, you know, you don't have dementia or something, you can be creative. I've never lost that. I'm just really curious about uh, things, and that, that's what keeps my creativity going, you know, because I want to I wanna be relevant. And you can't be relevant if you're old-timey. You can draw from tradition, but people want relevancy. When I get in the studio, I live it, man. I mean, Jimmy Bowen taught me, he said, he was my boss and a great producer, he said, you have to be there for the tracks, let your engineer do the vocals and the background vocals, and let him start to mix it, go check the mix and close it. I said, no, Bowen, I gotta be there for everything. He said, no, you don't. If you do, well, go do it, you're just stupid. I said, no, I love it, and I do. I just, when the singer sings, I wanna be there with them, so when they're having trouble, I can say, let's just call it a night. So, I, you know, I had a good life, man. Who would have ever believed, for one thing, I would have never believed I would be the president of a record label. I would have never believed I would have played with Elvis Presley. I would have never believed I would have had the chance to produce a song on Barbara Streisand. And I never believed that I would come back home to Winston-Salem and see my picture on the front of the journal 
I mean, I thought maybe it'd be on, at the bottom of the front of the entertainment section or something, but on the top of the fold, I mean, that's like, wow, that's incredible. Uh, I, have no, I have nothing to whine about. <laughs>